we've been exploring the nature of truth. So let's dive a little deeper and see what it brings up for us. Mulan Rudin was walking home for a long day at the coffee shop when he heard the plaintive cries of someone calling for help. So when he went to look, he found that someone had fallen down the well. And he went over to the edge of the well. He said, wait, wait, I'll throw down the bucket for you and pull you up. And it so happened that the man who had fallen down the well was a scholar. And he shouted back. He said, well, I'm a noble from a long line of nobles, and I only deal with nobles. What is your lineage? And Mulder Nasruddin thought for a moment, he said, Oh, well, my, I know my father was an old dervish, and it has been talk about as coming from a long line of sides, but I'll have to go home and ask my mother. So by the time he went home and asked his mother and came back, the scholar had drowned. And then there's a Sufi saying, if you're being chased by a tiger and a hunter comes along, do you inquire of the hunter whether he has credentials and has a hunting license? <coughs> and then there's that story about an old king who was so burdened by the affairs of state that his health began to fail and he contracted a potentially fatal illness. So physicians were called from all over the land and far-flung places, but to no avail. They could find no cure. So the soothsayers were called and the magicians were called, but no one could help the king until finally an old sage came along and said the only cure for the king is the milk of a lioness. Now, even though in this king's kingdom there was a tribe of people who were called the Moabs, and they themselves looked like lions, having massive manes of hair and being great warriors, they were not willing to undertake this task. So, the king, like all others in the many other realms, knew that the only one who had dominion over the creative forces was King Solomon, who we know had power over the birds, the animals, the winds, and so forth. So the king sent a messenger to King Solomon asking whether he could provide this cure for him, the milk of a lioness. Now when King Solomon received the messenger and the message that he brought, he called his closest advisor, Benaiah, to him. And he said, Benaiah, we have been asked to obtain the milk of a lioness for such and such a king. Would you be willing to undertake this task? And Benaiah said, I will not do it. For the king, I will not even do it for you, but I will do it for God. And he asked King Solomon to provide him with ten goats. So he took the ten goats and he went up to the domain where it was known that lions and lionesses were. And finding a den, where a lioness had just given birth to cubs. On one day he tossed a goat to the opening of her cave. And in the following days, each day he would throw a goat until finally he had the confidence of the lioness and was able to get close enough not only to pet her, 
but to extract some of her milk. So this he took to King Solomon. And King Solomon took the vial and gave it to the messenger who had come. And he said, here is the milk of the lioness for your king. May your travels be safe and may God watch your tongue. So the messenger went off. And he was a day away from his kingdom when staying at an inn, he had a dream. In his dream, all the parts of his body were arguing, I reign supreme. The leg said, you would not have been able to go to the lioness had I not carried you up the path. His mind said, well, if I hadn't have come into play, you would not have known to get the goats to give to the lioness. And the eye said, well, if, you, if I hadn't been there, you would not have been able to find your way, and so on. Each one of the parts of the body arguing that they reign supreme. And then the tongue came into play and said, you're all wrong. I reign supreme. And they laughed at him. They said, oh, you flapping piece of flesh inside a dark place, who are you? But he said, wait and see. And so the next day he came back to his kingdom and his king. And when he was standing in front of the king with a vial, out of his mouth came, here, your majesty, here is the milk of the bitch that will bring your cure. And the king was furious. You bought me the milk of a bitch, a dog, when you know that you were sent to get the milk of a lioness? Off with your head, down to the dungeons you go until your head is locked from your shoulders. So down in the dungeon, the messenger lay down on the hard stone floor and tried to sleep, but in his half-sleep he had a dream. And of course, the tongue says, well, you see what I did? Do you now agree that I reign supreme? And all the other parts of the body said, yes, 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 but, but, but if you do, will you please save us? And so, when he woke up the next morning, the messenger said to the guards, take me to the king. And uh, when he was taken up before the king, he said, uh, why is it that you did not uh, take the cure uh, that was bought for you? And the king said, I asked for the milk of a lioness, not the king of a dog, bitch. And uh, the messenger said, what? Name, does it matter what it's called if it brings a cure? In fact, the word bitch in another language is the word for lioness. So the king took this on board and drank the milk and was instantly cured. Well, this story got back to King Solomon. And so, writing in his Journal of Truths, he wrote a line. What for you would be the line, the truth, that King Solomon wrote in his journal from this story? Remembering that we're exploring the nature of truth. What was it that King Solomon wrote in his journal in summation of this experience? What have you found in your life? Do you have some truths 
that you've written in your journal or in cryptid on your heart, embossed into your psyche. What is truth? Thank you.